Hi guys and welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. What you see in the vise is a little snatcher pattern. So without further ado, the hook in the vise then is a Hanak H300 barbless hook. This one's at size 12 and it's on a medium wire, which is important for this pattern as we intend to use it to fish high up in the water. Now, uh, I'm going to add a touch of super glue to the shank of the hook in order to make my thread, or in this case nano silk, stick to the shank. So I'm using Simplify Nano Silk at 50D, and as you can see it's black. I'm going to use my silk just to spread that super glue on the shank a little, and then I'm going to get a bed of thread down. Now the snatcher pattern originates from Scotland, as many of the, the best patterns do, and this one in particular has been inspired by a tyre called Willie Munn, who uh, is an excellent fly tyre. I believe he does do some of the, the, the shows around the country, so if you get a chance to, to go and see him tie, certainly worth your time. Okay, so we've got the bed of thread onto the shank of the hook, and what I'm going to add first of all is some Simplify silver wire. This is at 0.1 millimetres, as you can see. It's silver. I've already got a little bit off here that I've been working with, and I'm going to catch that in. It doesn't have to be the whole length of the body, uh, because we're going to be using some dubbing on this fly. Just want to catch it in and make sure it won't go anywhere. Now, it's important that you put the wire down first, because we're going to add a secondary rib, and what I'm adding is some mirror tinsel. This is 0.8 millimetres. As you can see, it's like a pearl luminescent tinsel. And again, I've already got a little piece cut off that I'm just going to catch in on top of my silver wire. And once I've got that into place, I can tidy that up a little bit and then come back to the bottom of the fly pattern. Now, for dubbing for this, any sort of squirrel, hair's ear dubbing will do. I'm going to be using some trout stalkers dubbing. Uh, this is, you'll see it's experimental. I've had this sort of blended up by Andrew. Unfortunately, Andrew's found himself in the, the heart of uh, local politics where he lives. So he's um, a bit slow in replying to messages, but I do believe he's still creating some of his dubbing and it's certainly worth picking up if you can find it available anywhere. So I'm just going to dub that onto the thread. This one's a mix of squirrel with some synthetic materials, uh, just to give it a little bit of life. Now, I've dubbed on a fair amount onto my thread, and I'm just going to bring that up the length of the body. You don't need to be too particular, uh, as long as you get coverage. And I want to leave quite a good bit of space just at the front of the hook here. Uh, I'm going to need that space to work with. Now, once I've brought my dubbing up, I'm going to hold my thread in position and I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush just to scruff that out a little bit. Uh, we're going to um, bring that mirror tinsel up, which will flatten it out, but I just like to make it as scruffy as possible. So next, we're going to bring up our mirror tinsel, and I want about four turns in this. Uh, I don't want it touching turns or just the odd turn. About four turns is right for a size 12. Try not to do what I've just done and catch the point of the hook, because that will encourage the mirror tinsel to part company with your fingers, and you don't want that. So once you've got your four turns in, few turns of the nano silk to hold it into place. I like to get a few turn, turns sorry, in front of the material before coming in and cutting it away. Now, the next thing then is the hackle. And the reason this fly works so well is partly due to this hackle that I'm going to tie in now. Uh, it makes it have quite a, a big profile and it sits in the upper layers of water. And I'm just using a ginger cock cape and again I've already picked out a feather and I've stripped back the edge here to catch in. Now before I do that I'm going to add 
a little bit of wax just to get a bit of grip to hold the material in place then I can dress that up to my thread like so make sure I've caught it in a few turns to hold it into place and then with if you've got a good um, cop cape you can just use your fingers to bring your hackle over now again this is not overly important you don't need to take particular care with it it's just to give it that profile and to slow down the sink rate really so bring that all the way to the bottom of my fly I might get one more turn there and this time I'm going to grab my silver wire and at this point you wonder why the good lord only gave us five fingers on each hand <laughs> but he did so it's a bit of a, a juggling act and what you want to do is catch that in and once you've got it it's fairly straightforward again try and avoid the hook point and bring your wire up over and through your hackle to protect that uh, I find with these kind of flies the scruffer they are the better after I've taken a few fish they really scruff up and uh, they tend to work even better so I'm going to just get a couple of turns to hold my wire into place and then a couple of turns in front now keeping hold of your thread you can twist your wire away I'm going to just find the end of that feather and snip that off now that's looking pretty good before we go on full holding the thread again secure I just want to scruff out a little bit more of the dubbing just gently don't go in too hard with your dubbing brush or you'll end up destroying your fly uh, any any fibers that are sticking out you're not happy with you can simply pull away and that's looking not so bad so far so next I'm going to add in a green wells cape and as you can see it's got like banding this one's really old which makes it particularly delicate so I've already taken a feather off uh, that I'm going to use and as you can see I've stripped back uh, all the waste bit at the bottom of the feather again before I carry on I'm just going to get a little bit more wax onto my thread just to give it that bit of grip now I'll dress that up bring my thread over to catch it in like so and then hopefully when I get my hackle pliers which I'm trying to locate in amongst the carnage that is my time bench I'm going to catch that like so and I want to get the use of the entire feather if I can but um, I've been tying up a few of these for my uh, own boxes of late and I've found that 9 times out of 10 I'm snapping the feather because uh, I could really do with getting a new cape but you know as if by magic it's actually worked for the camera this time so uh, be thankful for small mercies now as you've got two or three locking turns in keep pressure on your thread pull your hackle pliers away and you'll be left with your end now I've licked the thumb and forefinger of my left hand and what I'm going to now is just bring in all the little bits back from the eye this pattern's got a tendency to, to leave bits near the eye and you don't want that if you can help it so I've just got that and you can see there's still a couple of bits left which I'm going to come in and trim as best I can with my snips uh, let's have a look at that now yep that's looking okay next then we're going to add jungle cock eyes now if you haven't got jungle cock eyes goose by its work I don't think it's as aesthetically pleasing but it does work so Here's a, 
uh, jungle cock eye that I've stripped off. As you can see, it's quite big because I'm going to split this. Now, before I split it, I just wanted to show you this. Uh, you can see it's an intact feather and it's got the guard hairs up the side. Now, in preparation for tying this fly, uh, and I could have done it on camera, but it would have took me some time, what I've done is I've put a small slit into the feather and I've removed the guard hairs either side of the eye. So what I can do next, once I've prepared that feather like so, again, just keep slicking everything back, bring your feather over the top, and then you can use your thumb and forefinger just to split that down. And what I try and aim for here is just where the black turns to yellow is where I want the feather to come in at the head of the fly. So I'm going to bring that over couple of turns into place and then what I want to do and I've tried this all different ways some people fold back this part tie it in and then snap it away when I do that the fly falls to bits so what I, uh, I've decided is the best method for me is to hold it up at this point and just trim that away and, and try and just keep that as tidy as you can at the front because we are going to build our head. So once you've got as much of the stuff out of the way as you can, come right to the eye of the hook and start to build your head. Now because we've used nano silk on this occasion, there's a wee thread, and there's a wee hackle fibre just trying to sneak in on the act. Make sure you get that out of the way. I'm just not catching it. There we go. And then I can build up a nice head. And once I'm content, I've got it looking how I want. I can come in with my whip finish tool. And finish the fly off. Now, I would use super glue on this particular pattern. Uh, that's what just because that's what I've been using for the rest I'm going to continue to use super glue but you can use uh, UV resin or head cement it's it's up to yourself I've got this super glue here that um, I've got the brush trimmed down uh, and I, I find that when I use super glue rather than resin I don't have to worry about uh, cleaning out the eye as long as I'm as long as I'm careful when I'm applying the super glue it works just a treat. And there we have uh, a little traditional Scottish fly. How do you fish this fly? I would fish it uh, on a washing line generally, or even straight through. If I was fishing a team of dries, I would consider putting something like this in the middle, probably in smaller size, like 14, but it would uh, certainly do a job for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.